You can use the fundamental identity sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1 to find sine of theta if you know cosine of theta and to find cosine of theta if you know sine of theta. So let's look at these examples. We know that cosine of theta is equal to 1 so we want to find sine of theta. So sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is equal to 1. Well, we know cosine of theta is equal to 1, so we have sine squared theta plus 1 squared, because this is cosine squared of theta, not just cosine theta, is equal to 1. So sine squared of theta plus 1 is equal to 1. So sine squared of theta, if I subtract 1 from both sides, is equal to 0. And if I take the square root of both sides here, I will just get the sine of theta is equal to 0. All right, let's try the next one. So find cosine of theta given that sine of theta is equal to 0 and cosine of theta is less than 0. So sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is equal to 1. So we know sine uh, theta is equal to 0, so this would just be 0 plus cosine squared theta is equal to 1. So cosine squared theta must equal 1. If I take the square root of both sides, I'll get cosine squared, oops, excuse me, I'll get cosine of theta is equal to plus or minus the square root of 1. Now here it says that the cosine of theta has to be less than 0. Here we're getting plus or minus um, square root of 1, so we're definitely not going to use the positive one. We want the negative one because it needs to be less than 0, so cosine of theta is just equal to negative 1. So now I want to find cosine of theta when we know sine of theta is equal to 5 over 13. So sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is equal to 1. So sine of theta is 5 over 13. So I'm just going to put 5 over 13 here, but we can't forget to square it. Plus cosine squared theta is equal to 1. So I'm just going to subtract that from both sides. And I'll go ahead and square it. That's 25 over 169. Okay, so then I need to do the cosine squared theta is equal to 169 over 169 minus 25 over 169. Okay, so we just need to do 169 minus 25, which is 144, and I'm just going to finish it up up here because I kind of ran out of room. So cosine squared theta is equal to 144 over 169. And now I need to take the square root of both sides to solve for the cosine of theta. And it's plus or minus, so 144 over 169. So cosine of theta is going to equal plus or minus, if I take the square root of the top I get 12, and the square root of the bottom I get 13. But we need to figure out if it's going to be the plus or minus, and we get that from here, so this is quadrant 2. So in quad 2, so all are positive here, cosine is positive here, tangent is positive here, and sine is positive here. So we're looking at cosine, so cosine in quadrant 2, which is this one, is going to be negative, so we're not going to use the positive one. So cosine of theta is equal to negative 12 over 13. All right, let's try the next one. So once again, we know we're just going to use sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is equal to 1. So we know cosine of theta is equal to 3 over 5, so sine squared theta plus 3 over 5 squared equals 1. So sine squared theta plus 9 over 25 is equal to 1. So sine squared theta 
is equal to 1 minus 9 over 25. And let's perform that subtraction. So sine squared theta is equal to 25 over 25 minus 9 over 25. So 25 minus 9 is equal to 16. So this will be sine squared theta is equal to 16 over 25. And now I just need to do the square root of both sides to get the sine by itself um, instead of it being sine squared. So sine of theta is equal to plus or minus the square root of 16 over 25. So sine of theta is equal to plus or minus 4 over 5. But now we need to use this last little bit that tells us that it's in quadrant 4. And if we look at our little chart that I drew up here, um, only cosine is positive in quad 4. So this will be negative. So we have sine of theta is equal to negative 4 over 5.